Hi, listener. Hope you enjoyed your Gregorian calendar new year. We are still on our break, but we will see you next week with an explosive start to 2023 here at We Read It One Night. In the meantime, enjoy part one of our discussion of The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Did you know, I cannot for the life of me remember where I heard this, but you know Giselle Bunchen? Yeah. Bunchen? Yeah. So she's married to Tom Brady, who, yeah. for, you know, those of you who don't, I guess, live in the U.S., he's an American football player, and she's a hot Brazilian model. Mm-hmm. And she apparently is, like, a witch, like, low-key. Really? Like, Tom Brady has said in, like, multiple interviews. <laughs> Not that she's a witch, but he's like, yeah, my wife always has me do like specific chants and like specific rituals like before all the games and like nice. certain years she'll be like, oh, like this is your season. Like, honey, like I'm going to be with you. I'm going to support you. And then like that season I'll win the Super Bowl. And then like the next <laughs> year she'll be like, you know, sweetie, this isn't your season, but like we'll get through it. Like, and then like, you know, he he doesn't win the Super Bowl or whatever. So like. I feel like we've been giving Tom Brady like too much credit. His success is actually like Tom Brady isn't the goat. It's Giselle. Giselle is the goat. Like she's has, I guess, some sort of like coven. She's from where is she from? She's from Brazil originally. I think Brazil. Yes, and she has like like six sisters, like some absurd amount of sisters. So maybe they're actually all like a coven. She has five sisters. She has a twin, actually, Patricia. Oh, my God. You want to talk about witchy stuff? I know. Is, she, is Patricia identical? No, she's paternal. Oh, talk about – not even just that, but talk about getting, like, the short end of the stick, Giselle and Patricia. Oh, she's – oh, of all the sisters. The sisters are Raquel, Graziella, Gabriella, Raffaella, Patricia, and Giselle. <laughs> Wow, so why the did they hate Patricia so much? I know. Oh my god, and it's not like it's not even like she's not even like the oldest, like named after someone. Yeah, well, maybe like someone like passed away, like maybe. right before she was born, like so she is named after someone. But like, it, listen, Patricia's not like a bad name. It's just like when you name all your other kids like Giselle and Raquel, what are you doing going with Patricia? <laughs> Patricia <laughs> looks very similar to Giselle. She's just like six inches shorter, so that probably explains yeah, it. Right. Back Whatever. when. Models were actually tall. I'm just saying. So there are six of them. Mm-hmm. We have at least one That's twin. For a coven. And I'm just saying, like three is a is a significant is like a number. You know what I mean? Double, it's like a witchy number, mm, like in like three. mythology and shit like that. So it's like double, double, double toil and trouble. <laughs> like <laughs> confirmed oh theory. Giselle wow. Bunchen and her sisters are witches. Complimentary, not derogatory. You know, of course, yeah. Can it even be derogatory at this point? And also, Giselle is responsible for all of Tom Brady's Super Bowl wins. Well, yeah. I mean, that's a natural corollary. Okay. So today, we're not discussing a book that has to do with witches. This book is called The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. It is a contemporary. It is a rom-com that is actually funny. Yeah, it's funny, and it's not, like, at the character's expense. It was a very funny, sweet book. I honestly – I remember really liking it, but I liked it, like, almost even more the second time. I also, like, forgot most of it, <laughs> like, but – Yeah, no, I <laughs> – yeah. I mean, I remembered as I was going along, but I wasn't, like, when I started, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember how this ends. So, first of all, our two main characters are Stella and Michael. His mom is Vietnamese. Stella also uh, is autistic, and it's in own voices, autistic romance, because Helen Huang is autistic. And she was actually diagnosed, like, late in life. Like, she wasn't diagnosed until her daughter was getting diagnosed. So then she was like, oh, mm-hmm. there's a lot of similarities here. <laughs> like, is this fucking play this about fucking- me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? And But because of that, we recently saw uh, a video that was, like, talking <laughs> about how, like, they've never found – um and evident evidence of like autism in cats because like they've never found like a a neurotypical cat which basically just means like all cats are just like naturally autistic <laughs> which means that this book gets pl- an automatic plus two yeah. on the cat scale well i was thinking about that after i sent it to you and i was like is that i mean is that kind of just like another play on the whole like every cat is a psychopath remember that joke like way back when like they're all trying to kill you 
I don't I just don't know if that's where that like is they are they actually testing the cats for autism or like are they just saying like I don't know. They've just never found a neurotypical cat. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure autism exists in dogs because I'm pretty sure my friend was like, yeah, my dog has autism. <laughs> I don't know. Don't fact check me on that. Don't don't uh quote no, me. No, that actually that actually like rings a bell in my head or something else with dogs. That you, yeah, oh, anxiety. Had... Anxiety for dogs. Not well, but that's like – But that's different, different, yeah. Another A word though. I just don't know if that's what I'm thinking Thank of. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, when you said it, I like it triggered a bell in my head. I just don't know if it's like I've heard. I'm pretty sure we had that or... argument before when my friend told me that her dog had autism, and you were like, "No way!" So this book opens with Stella having dinner with her mom and dad, and her mom's like, "Stella, dear, you should know that we're ready for grandchildren. Have you tried Tinder?" It's just like, oh my god! I like <laughs> Stella is she's she's 28, right? Even though she puts 30 on her dating profile for some reason. No, she's 30. She's oh, she is 30. Okay, why did Michael? I think, no, I knew that, but I was thinking she was 28. He was 26 for some reason. Because no. I could have sworn when, yeah, it, I mean, it doesn't matter. But like, yeah, her parents are just like, yeah, we just wanted to let you know our expectations. And I'm just like, oh my God. Like, this is a classic uh, parent move. Our, yeah. Our, gra- our mom has always been very much like, do whatever the fuck you want. Like, don't like give well, it to sure. society's expectations. But recently, and I always thought it was going to be our grandmother, yeah. mom's mom, that like started pressing. And she definitely asked me if I have like a boyfriend every time I see her. Yeah. But recently, our grandpa has been like, when are you yeah. going to get a husband? And I mean, kids, yeah. I, man, I was not expecting that from me him. neither. Like, left he was field. like, when am I going to get to see my grandchildren? And I was like, what? Like, was not expecting We're your grandchildren. <laughs> oh, I mean, his great grandchildren. That's what it meant. Yeah. He's like, I want babies or whatever. And I was like, uh, excuse me? Like, <laughs> What what is this like final boss level? I thought I'd already conquered this. <laughs> anyway, every time he does that, I'm like, well, what if like instead of a husband, I had a wife? And then he's like, what what? And he just gets very flustered <laughs> and like just doesn't fully. And so I basically just like turn you know his like toxic masculinity back around on him, and it just like freaks well, him out. And- you just need to like make it seem as if be like, why are you asking me that? It's normally something only women would ask. Like just. Turn it around that way. No, I just I, I I make it gay, and then he gets very flustered. Yeah. It's my it's my like it's really my most effective tactic. Uno reverse. Yeah, uno. Reverse. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a wife. Why can't I have a wife? Having a <laughs> wife, like you're the one that always says that the wife has to be like the cooking and the cleaning and like right. doing and like taking care of her husband. So like, why would I want a husband when I could have a wife to do that for me, Grandpa? Yeah. Like, Excuse me, like one of those sounds like the sweeter deal, and it's not mm-hmm. a husband. <laughs> Riddle me that. <laughs> yeah. And you know who? But you know who would if I had a husband? You know what kind of husband would? Pa. Hmm. Pa would. Pa would make me dinner. Pa is a cook. It's not necessary, but it's definitely like you know, like on the pa spectrum, being a good cook. <laughs> Prefer for sure. For sure. Definitely pancakes and like bacon with maple syrup on a Sunday morning. That's like for I sure. But I don't know bacon. about like I know. Pa but... wouldn't make me bacon. Maybe he would make bacon. And just torture me. <laughs> bacon still smells really good to me, even though I don't eat it. Just enjoy the smell. Yeah, but then I want to it's a revolution. Like, crisp, crisp, crisp. You make veggie bacon. You want a revolution, I want a revelation. So listen to my declaration. <laughs> what? Is that we like hold a... these truths to be self-evident. Oh, what? I somehow knew it was gonna be. Pa would never like... make me bacon. And I was like, or is it from like the Mormon musical? What is it called again? Church of Latter-day Saints. The Book of Mormon. <laughs> the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon. <laughs> so it's like it's just called the Book of Mormon. <laughs> so Stella's mom, it's interesting because in the and we only see her parents a few times, but in this initial scene, her dad seems kind of like the more supportive one because he's like, he's like, Oh, Stella, how are you doing? Like, work? It's like, like the oh, classic like Mrs. Bennett and Mr. Bennett. Right. But then later on, we kind of get a little switch. And then her mom is the one who's like, you know, she's like, Oh, I'm gonna like touch you and like wear perfumes so that you can like practice like quote unquote oh my god like and Stella's like I fucking hate this like get it away from me but she like puts I... up with it yeah I got um, very I used a lot of emojis in my notes particularly <laughs> the like angry face emoji right. and yeah. also the like big eyes like emoji yeah you know what I'm talking about like the yeah. one where it's like the oh that's so cute face uh-huh. yeah like very frequently throughout my notes and <laughs> the first emoji was when her mom was like casually like touching her oh. and Stella was like I don't like it and she knows that I don't like it but she's yeah. still doing it and I was like mm. I and she was also and 
I'm not going to say who. I'm not going to out the person who said this to me. But before I got diagnosed with autism, when I was like talking about autism with a certain someone, and they were like, oh, yeah, like that's how you should like treat autism. Like you should like force like autistic kids to like like exposure therapy basically, but like not actually therapy because it's like, just yeah, they were like, we should just force them to become comfortable with like touching. And I'm like, I, it was just so, and I remember I shared that with my therapist. My therapist was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the, it's just because it's, it's not it's so exposure stupid. therapy know, in that case. It's like the autistic person learns how to mask and then no, it just I creates know. compounding trauma. I think it probably comes from the whole idea of like, yeah, people just don't understand what exposure therapy is because I was talking about, I think people have this idea of like, oh, you just need to like get back on the horse and like, you know, do things you're scared of and somehow it'll fix it. But that's not what it is. That's not what any kind of therapy is. It's like a measured like in a controlled environment. You know what I mean? Like it's not just like yeah. throw things. That's how people develop issues with things to begin with. It's like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you, you're you not going to be afraid of dogs until you're exposed to a dog but like after right. that if you have a bad experience just like throwing dogs at you is not gonna like solve it <laughs> like what <laughs> like one dog under each arm like yeah. softball throwing them towards <laughs> you like under <laughs> right <laughs> no. it's a scare tactic <laughs> do i tell that story <laughs> okay. i tried so my uh, my bro- our brother's room is really he has like a different uh like heating air conditioning system the rest of the house and he keeps his room really cold and sometimes it's very hot in the house and his room is very cold so i went in there the other day to like take a little nap but he was still sleeping and i got into bed with him and then he he just started like barking at me i was like what are you doing i wasn't scared i was just like what's going on and he was like it's a scare tactic And then you came back so then when he me. started like physically muscling me out of the bed, I left and then I got back in. Rachel and I are sharing a room right now because our grandparents are here. And I get back in the room and Rachel's like, where did you go? And I was just like, arr, 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 arr. <laughs> it's a scare tactic. And then just would not explain for like the rest of the day. <laughs> I feel like it comes from the whole like, oh, if someone's like acting creepy towards you, just act as crazy as possible and like act yeah. crazier than they are and they'll get scared off. It's a scare tactic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Stella Stella works as um an an econometrician. An, an econ- oh, that's what it is. I was like, yeah. I can only remember econometrics, and I couldn't remember like what the job title was, which is basically just super fancy math economics. Rachel, would you like to give a better explanation of what? No, that's fine. I do appreciate the math on the cover <laughs> since that's like what all of graduate level economics is. Even though it's just, it's it's algebra on the cover, I'm pretty sure, but. But yeah, so she's really good at her job and she's like a workaholic. She works like seven days a week because she finds it really comforting, which is a thing with autism, like getting like hyper fixating on things and also like liking routine. And she she tells she's like she tells her parents, she's like, yeah, I'm up for a promotion. I got like a promotion again, but I turned it down because like it would require having direct reports and like I don't want that. And I was like, honestly, like I get it. Like every time like when I first started working at my current job, like one of like the higher up people like we were at happy hour or whatever. And he was like, oh, you're going to be like like all of our bosses one day and I was like god I hope not like no. that just seems like every time his mom's like oh you're gonna be a CEO I was like no that sounds like so much work that I don't want <laughs> yeah no honestly I'm I recently recently in the past like few years came to the re- I'm just like so bitter that like quote-unquote leadership positions are so pushed and like required for college because like I have never had any interest in being a quote-unquote leader of like clubs and shit like I just don't like that and here's the thing 99% of people don't need to be that, right? Like we don't need that many yeah. leaders. Why is that the one thing that's prioritized? It's useless. I hate it. It's like not even like why is it a required skill for like everything, you know? Like I I am so bitter about that. I just like don't understand why. It's like for what? I feel I do feel like Stella is almost like hyper adapted. I feel like she's like the ideal person to live in this like horrible society where everyone is expected to go sit in front of a computer all day every day. Because yeah. that's what she loves. Like, can you imagine? I feel like that's a superpower to have to be like, you know, hyper focused and like super interested and like love like go sing in office all day into like yeah. I don't like what a convenient thing to be super into. I feel like I don't know. But it's also supposed to be like she's sort of like I know she's. It's in also other like ways, a coping but... like ma- slash masking mechanism in a lot of ways because she's avoiding. She doesn't want to like interact with like the quote-unquote real world or like other people because she's had like bad experiences in the past and because it's difficult for her and so like it's an avoidance technique as well yeah i just feel like if the capitalist i don't know whoever 
is in charge of capitalism were to sit down and like design their ideal <laughs> the person. The king of capitalism. Yeah, it would be Stella. <laughs> Who is the what mascot is that best for? Uh, Colonel Sanders, maybe. <laughs> That's like no, the king of no, uh, no. of uh, mercantilism. I feel like. Yeah. No. I, you know what I feel like for some reason, like I'm getting Kool Aid Man. Mm. Like he's the king of capitalism. You know what I mean? Do you see how you, that vibe is there? Yeah. Oh, you know who it is? It's the Quaker Oats guy. Oh yeah. The Quaker Oats guy is the king of capitalism. Mm-hmm. No, because I feel like isn't he? He's Quaker, right? So he's like they're all about like sharing and like pacifism, aren't they? Sure, but like you know who else was a Quaker? Who the Quaker Oats guy is based off of, and but not actually him. Who? William Penn, founder of Pennsylvania, who was like definitely not following those Quaker beliefs. But again, mercantilism. I feel like back then, right? Yeah. What other mascot? The Monopoly Man. Like that's the most ah, obvious. That's too obvious. A little too on the nose. We'll give it some thought. Burger King. <laughs> Burger King. Oh, oh, yeah. The Burger King. <laughs> no, no, no. Ronald McDonald. Uh, yeah. He's the so, secret. The Burger so King. The candid. Burger King King is the front, and Ronald McDonald is the man behind the curtain, controlling, like pulling the puppet strings and smiling while he's doing it. Yeah. With his bodyguards, the Coca Cola polar bears. Oh my God, yeah. No, you're right. Yep. Well, <laughs> we've landed on a conspiracy theory and it's 100% true. <laughs> so Stella's parents are like, oh, why don't you try getting with Philip James, your like coworker slash our family friend? And Stella's like, well, he's conceited and abrasive, but he is a direct speaker. She liked that in people. <laughs> she's like, I think he, and she tells her mom, she's like, I think he has several personality disorders. And her mom's like, maybe he'll be a good match for you then. Which is just like, oh God. I can't believe the mom made, made a recovery relative to the dad later on. I wouldn't have thought yeah, it possible. Yeah, I just like, wow, both the parents kind of suck. Uh, Philip James does not deserve either name, but especially the name James. I'm like very upset. Like that's my favorite <laughs> boy name. And like the fact that Philip James has it is unacceptable. <laughs> so Stella like tells her mom, okay, I'll try, whatever. And then she goes to work, even though it's Sunday morning. Uh, because she works, as Allison's saying, seven days a week. Wait, she's also thinking about how like she doesn't, she hasn't had relationships, she hasn't had a boyfriend before. Like she's only had sex like a few times because she's she's like she has sensory issues, and so she has a lot of problems with sex. She kind of like freezes up, and she's like, I'm just bad at sex. And I'm like, no, every guy you've had sex with is an asshole. Because yep. she's like, I literally become like stiff as a board when I have sex because it's just yep. like very overwhelming for me. And like these guys just like. Like, I think, I don't know what the direct quote is, but multiple times she's like, they just like keep grunting and panting over me or whatever. Right. And I was like, oh, uh, what? <laughs> like, yeah, that's not even just like your regular run of the mill. Like, ah, it wasn't that good sex. Like, what yeah. the fuck? Like, no, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And they definitely, and they notice because she's like, yeah, they'll be like, like the last guy she was like, he finished, told her she needed to loosen up and left. So like, yeah. it's not like they don't notice. Like they know, like, I don't know. I, just, like, I don't know God. how you could not. But. Yeah. The first time I read this book was like before I was diagnosed with autism. And this was actually the book that like made me first start thinking that I had, because I was like, hang on, like, is this fucking play about me? <laughs> <laughs> and like somehow reading the book after having a diagnosis is just like so much more uncomfortable and like I've noticed that just like in general like with like I feel like my sensory issues have like been heightened ever since like diagnosis but I think that's just because I'm like finally like allowing myself to feel them and like acknowledge them instead of like trauma responding them back down and like so like this book was just like because I, I just like felt it so much more with Stella because I was like oh, I do that like oh, oh my god <laughs> like oh no <laughs> yeah. yeah so Stella goes into work she works every day and like a few hours in the morning to go have breakfast with the parents is as most as much as she'll ever take off. And Philip comes into her office and he's like, like somehow they start talking about like he's going on a date with like the young intern. He has an economy sized box of condoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably got them from Poppy's mom. Oh my God. Um, there was like a two for one deal and they split the cost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, he's gonna go fuck the intern. He's gonna like have a date with the intern, and he's just mm-hmm. like a general dick and. He, like, asks her if she's a virgin, 
Stella. Mm -hmm. And I just like, why doesn't this book end with this man getting fired? <laughs> I know. I don't understand. What like the he fuck? I know he, he even gets like a consolation. Like, I don't understand. Stella's to the end is like, oh, I'm glad I don't have to feel guilty about like turning him down again or whatever. Like, no. Why would no? Philip James needs to be fired. <laughs> Yeah, and he says that she needs to practice. And so Stella's like, wow, Philip James is right. I do need to practice to be better at sex. And so she decides to hire a escort, and she Googles this on her work computer. I was like, the balls on this woman. <laughs> just not even pull up incognito. Like, she just pulls up Google at work on the work Wi-Fi on her work desktop and is like, it's San true. Francisco escort services. <laughs> I was like, Stella, ma'am, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Wow. Um, yeah, don't do that on your work computer. Um, just generally, just no. <laughs> no. But even if your work computer is using the same Wi-Fi as your house Wi-Fi, like use incognito mode because that could – if you're using the same Wi-Fi, like it could still come up. <laughs> just letting you know. <laughs> so, okay. So now we cut to Michael who is our hero and he is like getting ready for a night of escorting because surprise, surprise, he's the one Stella picked. And he's like thinking about how much he hates it really. And like it's usually like, you know, rich older women who don't really like care about if he's having a good time and just, you know, are, look are looking down on him mostly I think is the big thing. Like, yeah. Are, he are just feels like, very devalued. Like it's just yeah. very draining for him. He's struggling. He The reason he does it is because he's struggling with bills. Um, his mom has like stage four cancer and it's like obviously the American healthcare system is evil. And so she he like escorts so he can pay the bills. But he is like. He's looking at like a bill for his mom, and then he's looking at uh, uh, the bill for his like S no his STD records. Yeah, and I was just like, what a contrast like yeah. between those two. The yes, the American health healthcare system sucks, but the reason that his mom specifically doesn't have health insurance, even though she thinks she does, like somehow I don't know. He's like, been telling her she has great. He's been health telling insurance her she does. Time. It's because his dad is an asshole, and I don't know if we want to like wait for the reveal. But Let me just say that now. Yeah, so his dad – basically, Michael, his big thing is that he thinks that he's going to be as bad as his dad because they have so much in common and his dad is, like, a terrible person who is – he's a con artist, basically, and he, like, has conned tons of women, including his wife, Michael's mom, um, in addition and to has, cheating like, on, her on her for years. Yeah. And he basically, like, you know, wiped out all her bank accounts, took out a ton of loans in her name. And she definitely knows about that. So I don't know how she doesn't know about the health insurance. I just don't, like – I don't know. But, yeah, Michael – has not told anyone in his family and doesn't even by the end of the book. Like none of his five Which, like, sisters. I don't think he needs yeah. to. But none of his five sisters know about it either. He just, but his big thing, he like won't ask for help from anyone. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's his big thing. Yeah. And his, his, his mom does own um like a dry cleaners and like tailoring business. But that, that was like, she almost like lost the business because of like when, when his dad left and like took everything, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful reminder, friends, to um, keep all your finances separate even when you get married. <laughs> well, you can't really do that. Yeah. But like if I, if we don't have a joint bank account, can I take out a loan in my spouse's name? I mean, who knows if it was legal to begin with when he did it? You know what I mean? Yeah. But then why would she have to pay them back? If he illegally took out a loan, why does she have to pay them back? Because she's like she had to mortgage the house and everything. I'm honestly not sure how it works, but you might – I think you can be liable for like your spouse's – no, you definitely are even if – like like for medical care, for example. Like haven't you heard those like stories, sad stories of like people getting – like old couples getting divorced because – so that like they won't be liable for the medical bills? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, anyway, his dad's an asshole and screwed them all over. So Michael is like thinking about – how much it sucks. He has this like whole fantasy that he goes through in his head of like hot for teacher to get ready. Um, and that's his like big thing. He likes, you know, smart women. And then he walks to the restaurant. He walks into the restaurant looking for Stella and he's like, all right, her age says 30, but that's never true. Like anything under 40 is always a lie unless it's a group thing, which I don't do. <laughs> and he's like, because I hate like the idea of destroying young love depressed the hell out of him. Well, he's talking about 
specifically in terms of bachelorette parties. No, I understand. He's like, I you... don't do bachelorette parties. No, I, I know. I know. He wanted to live in a world where young bride-to-bees only slept with their grooms-to-bees and vice versa. But like, do people actually sleep with the, sl- yes. the strippers on their bachelorette parties? Yes. As a group? Like, I don't get it. I don't know as a group, but like, yes, that is a thing. Some people think that it's like not like, oh, you're not married yet. It's like your last night of freedom, TM mm. or whatever. Yeah, no, it's super shitty, but people definitely do that. That's not, yeah. But yeah, Michael has to, before he goes, he like jacks off in the shower a little bit. I mean, he doesn't like jack off. He just like, you know, loads the gun. Like, yeah, so he has, he like figures out it's her by process of of deduction because everyone else in the restaurant already has another person with him. She's the only one alone. And it's like pretty awkward initially. Stella's like, basically, I am terrible at sex. I'm terrible with guys and I want you to help me practice and I don't just want it to be a one night thing I want to like hire you for a few lessons and instead of saying like no he he's like I'm absolutely not doing this I never do repeat client visits like because it's too messy he 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 did do like them before and like he had like this one client who will meet later like basically Mm -hmm. like stalked him and like was obsessed with him and he was like never again right um but he doesn't tell her that like right away he because he i don't know he like he takes him a long time to like take her seriously yeah he just doesn't believe that like anyone he's like she's way too hot like there's no way she's like this bad and awkward at sex like it just doesn't make any sense stella does try to pull an edward by getting him to agree to the proposal before telling him what it is she's like will you promise me something and he's like well what is it she's like no no promise he's like no i'm not gonna do that which is the reasonable and rational response to that people just in case you were wondering that's but michael also like they're like they're having dinner and she's like don't eat lamb because she doesn't like the taste of lamb which i agree Mm -hmm. like the taste of lamb is fucking disgusting she's like it tastes woolly she's like i don't want to kiss you and have it taste woolly (laughs) but this whole dinner like michael like stella just keeps like treating him with respect like she keeps treating him as like a yeah. person like she, where and he's like oh my god like nobody ever treats me like a person he's like so shook because <laughs> she's like is there anything you would prefer that i not eat or drink either like that's the first thing he's like what? yeah like yeah she's not just viewing me <laughs> as a sexual object like holy fucking shit and because he also has like apparently he looks like a k-drama star like some sort of like in that universe K drama star, and he's like, mm-hmm. I always get like older Asian women trying to fuck me because I look like this K drama star, and like it always reminds me of fucking my mom, and it's horrible. And then <laughs> like, Stella's no. like, Oh no, you're better looking than he is, of course. <sighs> <laughs> and then she starts talking about something. She like says what she does for a living or something because Stella's one hundred percent honest. Like this whole time, Michael's assuming that she's just like lying about her name and her age and everything, but like. Mm-hmm. She just gives him all of her personal information yep. right off the bat. And at some point, she, like, finds out she's, like, I don't know, she does something with, like, math or whatever. And he's, like, damned if he didn't have a thing for smart girls. And, yeah. like, yeah, Michael has, like, a full-on, like, library nerdy girl. He's, like, thing. she gets prettier and prettier as she tells him about the smart people math stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, because she gets so excited about his her job and he like loves it. He lo- he's like, I don't understand a single word of what you are saying, <laughs> but you look so cute when you talk about it. Yeah. And he's just like so turned on. It's just the cutest <laughs> fucking thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's like, Oh, I guess I look, I guess econometricians make shitloads of money because this is like the most exclusive hotel in the city or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about that, but <laughs> She Stella's like mm-hmm. also rich separately, like from her parents. But she also does but, make like it said that she makes because she keeps getting, I guess, like pay rises, but like refusing promotions because <laughs> she like yeah. works seven days a week and she's like, I don't like buy a lot of stuff, so it's like sure, fine. But it, yeah. So they go upstairs. Stella like immediately takes her shoes off and she's like, "Is this rude to do it with someone else? Like, why, would it ever, how could it ever be rude to take your shoes off inside? No." I common courtesy it's a stupid stupid american thing where people don't take off their shoes inside the house and i'm like i don't understand but i've never encountered it so being fucking gross to do it i know but some people i guess are like oh it's rude to like take off your shoes in front of to like have your feet i just feel like that's all like the foot fetish people not wanting to be outed like true that are mm. like pushing this propaganda mm. maybe there's just like a much larger on to something. portion of the population that has a foot fetish than we know and they're all american you know I mean? like, yeah and in, in they're the just US like hiding it yeah yeah come out yeah. be free <laughs> and let me take my <laughs> shoes off inside common, right? and also yeah. take your shoes off inside because why the fuck are you tracking dirt all over the no, house get out of no. here so what are you doing yeah so he takes his shoes off too though so it's fine 
And she's like, also they're about to have sex. Like, what? What are you gonna keep your shoes on during sex? <laughs> I know. Well, she's just like nervous. I think it's just this show. She's like nervous. No, general, I, know, I know. But I know. um, so she's also like, I forget like how it starts. They he like tries to like kiss her, but she immediately freezes up because she like doesn't think she doesn't like kissing at this point. And but she's like, oh, but he smells like so good. Like he just smells so good. Even though, like she, and she's like, what cologne is that? And he's like, oh, I don't wear cologne. Like I don't like it. She asked him. She asked him in the ad to not wear cologne. Yeah. So it's just this natural scent. <laughs> but yeah, Michael this whole time is also like, Michael is a consent king, like all the way. Mm-hmm. Like every interaction they have, he's like, oh, do you like this? Is it okay if I do this? Like, can I do this? Like, mm-hmm. it's just, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. He also has a sick dragon tattoo that wraps around his entire fucking body. It's so yep. fucking cool. Like, <laughs> wow. Good for him. Yeah, it's like, like go it. starts at like his like right shoulder and like wraps around his torso and like goes across his butt or whatever and like <laughs> down his thigh. And, like it's just fucking sick. Like and yeah. still is like obsessed with it. She's like, I love it. Like later on during, you know, the big third act spoiler, third act breakup, he's like, she liked kissing my dragon tattoo so much. Like he thought even like my dragon missed her. Oh, <laughs> my dragon. If only there was a real dragon. Oh, oh, <laughs> this is a shifter AU. With her yep. both shifters? Yep. Stella would be a honey badger. That's her thing. She's Holy like my shit. mascot, the pugnacious honey badger. She yeah. said it twice and it's stuck in my head so much. There's one part later on where she's like, she goes to his house and she's like, I want to like leave my scent everywhere, like marking yeah. my territory, like, like a, a honey animal. badger. Yep. <laughs> Aww. Honey Badger don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Honey Badger do whatever the fuck it wants. <laughs> oh my God, I remember that. This came out in 2018, though, which I feel like was a few years after. I guess that like really stuck out to Helen Wong in like, you know, the 2000s. Maybe she just shows. fucking likes Honey Badger. Maybe. Maybe yeah, a nature true. documentary. Valid. Maybe it has nothing to do with that meme. It's valid. <laughs> so Michael's like, okay, we're going to practice like talking, the talking part of sex. And Stella's like, I've had sex. There's no talking part. And he's like, uh, (laughs) yeah, there is. And she's like, she actively disliked touching, but she created connections so much she hurt with it. Hmm. Yeah, I put a lot of like little sad brownie face in you. And Michael Michael takes off her glasses. And when he does it, everything, uh, like the background became a soft blur and he stood out in sharp focus. And I was Mm. like, oh, that's so beautiful. And then he tries he, – they start kissing finally. They're like on the bed. And he starts French kissing her. And she's like, no, no. I do not like that. It makes me feel like a shark having its teeth cleaned by pilot fish. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, same girl. Same. Oh my gosh. And they just close lip kissing. And she st- she forgets how to breathe. A la second Twilight reference, Bella Swan. She's both Bella and Edward. So is this <laughs> is this more confirmation that Bella is coded as autistic? Maybe is that just a thing? Saying. Forgetting how to breathe. I don't know. I feel like that's no. a, like but just like becoming heroin thing. I think, but also like becoming like hyper focused on one sensation and like not being able mm. to think about like other things. So I can like imagine like someone's kissing you and you just like like <gasps> like hold your breath like unconsciously. Mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I've definitely forgotten to breathe at times, not while being kissed, but like. Just at times, I'm just like sitting there and I'm like, oh, oops, like <laughs> got to breathe there for a second. Like I'll be reading a book or something. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. So everything is like going great until he tries to unbutton a her single shirt. button and that is like too much and she totally freezes up and he's like, OK, well, we're not having sex when you're like this, obviously. And she's like, what do you mean? She starts to cry. She's like so upset. She's like, none of the other guys did this. And God, I was so mad at all the other oh men gosh. Stella has been with. Oh, my gosh. I know. And so is Michael. Yeah. Michael's right. Michael is constantly ready to, like, destroy anyone who, like, makes Stella feel even a little bit bad. And yep. it's wonderful. And he yep. can because something you'll learn, like, the next scene is that Michael is a martial artist. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he's like trained in like karate taekwondo like tai chi like all of it like, he knows all of it and yes he definitely could be whoever he wanted up. yep so instead of they do not hook up michael's like all right we're gonna practice cuddling instead <laughs> so <laughs> they cuddle while watching a movie and stella falls asleep a kung fu movie because yeah. they bond over their mutual love of martial arts films yeah so they fall asleep 
she wakes up and she's like, oh my God, like I didn't do any of my routine. I didn't brush my teeth. Like this is disgusting. Like I, you know, my mouth is a breeding ground for germs. Also me. That's also something I got made fun of all the time when I would like sleep over people's house and I was like, or even like when I could start driving, I would be like, it would be like 3 a.m. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going home. And they'd be like, what? And I'd be like, like, I need to be able to brush my teeth. Like I can't sleep here. Like I can't wake up tomorrow morning. Well, I eventually started bringing a toothbrush, but like the first few times I, or I would be like, I need like, I need a toothbrush from you. Like, please, I need a toothbrush. <laughs> like, I can't. Oh, you would already like, be, you would be planning to sleep over. Okay. Yeah. No, I would just be like hanging out. And it would get late. Yeah. It's just so much nicer to sleep at home. We also find out Michael can do the splits. Just FYI. It's a secret talent. I'm very jealous. What? <laughs> he can do the Wait, splits. Wait, when does he do the splits? When they're, I guess we, I skipped, this is still when they're like watching the movie, but I, like she, he tells her that he does martial arts and she's like, can you do the splits? And he's like, yeah. For the uninitiated, the splits is just like a split. It's just oh, he what, can do what a was split. This, like, this, this like, what was it? Like this Korean woman that you were like watching her videos? And no, she it's just like, a I British way. To, it's just a British way to say it. And I guess Helen Wong too. Oh, okay. Yeah. She also like breathes in his t-shirt in the bathroom like it was rubber cement. I don't know what that means. I listened to that like four Interesting. times. Interesting. I did not Why catch rubber, that. I don't rubber cement. Anyway. I don't know what that means. <laughs> then she, she wakes up the next morning at 9.24 a.m. And she's like, I never sleep in. And just like, how do people function? I just don't understand how like everyone seemingly functions waking up before like 10 every day. 9, 10. Well, to be fair, they probably no don't does. go to bed at 2 in the morning like we do, Rachel. I understand. But like even – like. I'm going to be honest, like 8, 8.30, that's the longest I've ever been able to maintain and keep my sanity, like long-term. By long-term, yeah. I mean like a few months. Any earlier than that, I feel like most <laughs> people get up in the 7 a.m. range. That's insane. No, it's insane. So everyone has different natural sleep schedules. The morning people are oppressing us all. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> so Stella puts on Mike's, Michael's t-shirt the next morning, and he's like, oh, I like it. Me likey naturally, but he's oh she's in the bathroom and she hears him getting dressed. Like she hears him like open up his <laughs> overnight bag and she sprints out of the bathroom to like try to catch a sight of him naked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amazing. And she doesn't even hide it. She doesn't nope. even try to hide it. She doesn't. See, she's like I literally nope. like skate out of the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, and he's like oh like you didn't really get your money's worth. Like, I'll give you a refund. And she's like, no, no. Like, what about – and what about my deal to, like, help me, you know, for a few more sessions? And he's like, I'm sorry. I really don't do that. And she's like, well, but you could have told me that. Like, why did you waste – can you recommend some, one of your colleagues, like, another escort to, like, help me with this? You know, I trust your judgment. And he's like, no way. Don't fucking do that. Like, this is a bad plan. Michael don't do it. Hulk she, smash. Yeah. She just immediately – he's like, oh, God, I no, absolutely. Not. She's not allowed to cuddle with anybody <laughs> no. else. No dice. And she's like, she's like, all right, fine. If you won't tell me, like my method worked pretty well the first time, I'll just go back to the drawing board and search myself. And he's like, oh my fucking god, don't fucking do that. But then he he leaves. She's like, well, she's like, don't worry, I have a taser. I, oh like, yeah, it's fine. yeah, yeah. Like I have a like, it's totally fine. <laughs> and he's like very condescendingly. He's like, do you even know how to use it? And like, do you even know how to use a taser, Michael? Like, okay, no. she does. And then he's like, you were gonna use a taser on me, and she's like, well, I didn't, so obviously not. Like, <laughs> have you been tased? No. So <laughs> simmer down. If I wanted to, I would. Um, so <laughs> in a second, you wouldn't even see it coming. Your yeah. martial arts are nothing to my electricity. Here's my taser. <laughs> Try your dragon on me. Um, so <laughs> he leaves, but then like ten minutes later, he comes like sprinting back, like literally out of breath, spr- sprinting, and he's like, "Fine, yeah. I'll do it." I'll do it. He's like three and, sessions, fine. Yeah, <laughs> but then he's like, he's like, you have to promise not to get attached. And I'm like, oh, Michael, you sweet summer child, I you know. like, you silly goose. Well, Stella is like, she's like, okay, but in her head, she's like, well, I get obsessed with things. That's like what I do. I'm definitely gonna get obsessed. But also, like, I just throughout, she was like, oh, I can't lie. Like, I can't lie. And there's like other instances where like she wants to lie, but she like can't. I'm like, all right, well, how can you suddenly, like, lie about this, like, secret, like, obsession? Well, no, yeah. I don't think – I think she's more like I tend to get obsessed with things, so I have to make sure that I don't get obsessed mm-hmm. with him because, like, if I do, it's it's not going to go away. Yeah. It's not going to be something I can stop. So they make out to, like, seal the deal, um, and then they're cock-blocked by her mom, you know, calling. Mm-hmm. And, like, her mom's like, who – is that a man on the phone? So, okay, so then Michael goes to the gym the martial arts gym where he teaches some classes yeah he teaches yeah. classes and works out with his um best friend slash cousin kwan and kwan's brother kai who mm-hmm. also is autistic mm-hmm. and kai is like 
And Michael is like, oh, Kai reminds me a little bit of Stella. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. And yet and- does not make the connection. <laughs> no. no. There are no bra- there are no neurons firing in this no. man's brain. Like he's no. just like, oh yeah, like Kai's single-handed determination and like focus and social <laughs> awkwardness. Like that reminds me a lot of Stella, but like, oh, he's nothing like Stella. I was like, you are a dummy. <laughs> like, have yeah. you just been punched like too many times in the head by like the child, the twelve-year-old classes that you teach? Like, would it, like <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and and Quan is like basically like, oh, like why have you been like away so much every weekend? Like, why can't we ever hang out? Do you have a secret girlfriend? And Michael's like, no, no, I don't. Like, I've just been seeing a lot of different people. And Quan's like, you know, like you know, I don't give a shit if you're into guys. Like, just so you know, I'd be okay with that. And Michael's like, maybe I should just roll with that. Like, that would be like. I, I could just lie about that instead of like telling them the truth about my escorting. Like, God forbid I ask for help. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, he does escorting every Friday night and like he only right. does it on Fridays. He doesn't right. do it any other day of the week. Yeah, so now we got to fast forward over to first lesson number one. And Stella has created a lesson plan. So we're just going to keep <laughs> rolling with this hot for teacher dynamic. Like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it has like performance reviews. <laughs> oh my gosh. For her, not Michael. Yeah, she's like, should I have clarified that? Like, and then he's like, no, no, like, it's fine. But she still goes like down the list and just writes <laughs> Stella's before every. <laughs> And she's like, she's like, okay, we've perfected kissing. We don't need to practice that anymore. And besides, like, it, it's too intimate. Like, and he's like, I think you've watched Pretty Woman one too many times. <laughs> and he's mad. Like, he's actually, he gets like genuinely annoyed. He's like pissed that like Stella is like so insistent on keeping things like very professional and like very detached, despite mm-hmm. the fact that like he knows that he needs to keep it professional and detached. Mm-hmm. And like, it's a good thing that he can't kiss her because like then he'll get even more attached. But he's still like. <laughs> <laughs> oh and then he says she's missing a step because like each of her lessons are like it's like hand jobs and then blow jobs and then like missionary and like doggy style and like different like different positions and stuff and he's like you're missing a step and she's like what and she's he's like foreplay and she's like none of the other men did foreplay and i'm like just ready to like grab the steak knives that are on oh this God. like fancy table and just like go hunt down all these dickhead men. <laughs> like I know. so horrible to Stella. I know. <laughs> and Michael's like, like throughout this, he's just like, oh, she hadn't. He says some, something. I forget what he's like. The pretty woman comment. He's like, she hadn't caught his rudeness or his sarcasm. Maybe she was one of those book smart people who didn't know how to socialize. And he just keeps saying, like, oh, she doesn't He's seem just... to get my sarcasm. Yeah. <laughs> there are no there. He only has two brain cells and they are not talking to each other. Like, that's all that's <laughs> happening. He's such a dummy. Uh, he's also like, he, she's like, no cuddling. And he's like, you cuddle. You like to cuddle when you sleep. And mm-hmm. she's like, what? No. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, you do. And then in the back of his head, he's like, and I really liked it. That uh-huh. m- means nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so they go back they're finally like ready to start getting naked although i think yeah, stella was like technically naked for the cuddling the last time but this time she's, she's like, in her really broad naked. underwear for the cuddling yeah. and michael's like all right let me see your boobs wait wait but first she's like she's like should i undress and michael like sarcastically because he's still kind of pissed is like i don't know like isn't it in the lesson plan and then he like immediately feels bad about like belittling you know her lesson plans and like being sarcastic with her but like it just goes right over stella's head and she's like oh my gosh you're right and then she goes to write down get undressed at the beginning of every step on the lesson plan. yeah <laughs> he's like oh my god like i can't even be like annoyed with her because like she doesn't even understand like why i'm annoyed about the li-. he's like i just like i can't like Mm-hmm. I'm already in love with her. Oops. <laughs> Whoopsie yep. daisy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, but I can't like care too much or it'll turn escorting into cheating. And I, I was just like cheating against who? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you don't have a girlfriend. Maybe his other clients are cheating. I don't know. Yeah, but okay. So know. Stella finally gets naked. And he's like, she had the kind of nipples men and babies dream about. Which is like, <laughs> she's I really didn't need star nipples. I know. I didn't need that <laughs> sentence. Like, I just didn't. No. <laughs> he's like, they're constantly erect. And then he's like, they're the kind of nipples, like, she, like, sits on him. She, like, sits on it. Her, like, boobs are, like, in his face, like, the way they're positioned on the bed. And he's like, like, man, they were, like, so pointy. Like, I may be blinded by these nipples. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
maybe that's also like Michael has like it's like the Oedipus complex, like that baby's dream of Nicholas. Oh, I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, where's I did not need that. <laughs> Everything bad can somehow be traced back to Sigmund Freud. It's just like <laughs> that ain't the truth. Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we find out that. So Stella does at least masturbate. I'm happy for her with that Um, because yes. she does like – she's like, you know, I'm only ever – you know, I'm more comfortable doing this alone or whatever, like something like that. And they still don't have sex this time. But they do like foreplay and he's like, oh, she doesn't want to be kissed on the mouth. So he like kisses her on other places. And I'm like, it's just like really like – I know it's like, you know, he's not kissing her on the mouth for plot reasons. But it really just shows like romance novelists. Like you are very much underusing – kissing on other parts of the bodies like it doesn't automatically have to be on the mouth like it can be very very hot to like kiss other parts of the body and yeah they do foreplay and she's like shook that she likes it and then she starts kissing him on the mouth and she's like sorry i know i said no kissing but like i want this (laughs) (laughs) yeah when does she come up with the idea of like practice dating is that before or after ice cream that's after so okay. this night so she gives him her phone number and then she's like but you can sign up for like a fake phone number so that like i don't stalk you mm-hmm. afterward and michael is once again like oh my god she's treating me like a person this is <laughs> wild like i don't understand this and then he invites her to go out to the club next friday because kwan was like let's go to this new club in downtown san francisco mm-hmm. and so i was like oh okay sure but she's like not super into it and she says like what well, she's like going out was supposed to be fun for her it was work hard work and i was like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep yep mm-hmm. check it out checks out a lot so the first place they go is to get ice cream and Stella's like really not into the idea of sharing ice cream, which I I totally get. It just gives me a huge ick. I couldn't tell you why. I, I I've done it, but I I hate it. It's just so something about that texture of thing sharing with someone else's like juices. I don't know. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> well, I also just like if I'm really into the flavor, and then you have a flavor that I don't particularly like, like I'm gonna be mad that you are eating part of the flavor that I want to eat all of. Mm-mm. You know. Stella's yeah. like – because Stella's like, I'm getting mint chip. And Michael's like, oh, I should get a different flavor so that no, we can share and so that you can try. That and Stella's like, no, I have done very careful research and mint chip yeah. is the best ice cream flavor of all time. <laughs> right. I know. Like I – yeah, I totally like some of that. Yeah, no. I mean I'll like – you know, if you – I'll give you like a spoon. I'll get – I'll let you try it. But, and sometimes I – here's yeah. the thing. I'm a bit of a hypocrite. Like sometimes I'll be like, oh, can I have a little spoon of yours? So I'm curious if it's like a weird flavor even though I know I won't like it. But, like, something about it is just yeah. – yeah, no. But then he feeds her. He feeds mm-hmm. her ice cream. And he, he likes it. And she's spoonful. like <laughs> – And he holds her hand. Yeah. It's green tea flavor, though, which honestly, like mm, – Doesn't sound – Not it. But – She also likes his suit. He, oh, yeah. He's wearing yeah. a suit. And, and she's, she's like, like oh. wow, your suit's so nice. Like, who made it? And he's like, I, I did. <laughs> he doesn't tell her, though. He's like, oh, I have a good tailor. And mm. then later she's like, wait a second. It was you. You're the tailor. Yeah. Yeah. Michael likes to design clothes and he like has a fashion degree and everything. But then he has to like – he had to like – he had a big like hotshot job in New York. But then he had to like come back home like when his mom got sick and his dad scammed the mall and it was very mm-hmm. sad. And yeah, but she likes his very suit and she's like, oh, I want to go to – maybe I should switch tailors because like my tailor always stabs me with pins because I'm picky. And again, this is another <laughs> – like Michael's ready to flip the table. He's like, give me her name. I'm going to break her legs. Like what? <laughs> How dare she stab you with pins? He's so pissed. So now, yeah, now they go to the club and Stella's like thinking she's like she doesn't drink drink or smoke or like do anything like that she doesn't like doing that like in addition to just like not liking but she was considering it and then michael doesn't and she's like i don't want to do it by myself yeah but she also she had she's having a thought she's like yeah i don't really like get drunk or like do anything like that because she's like i don't like to not be able to think and i'm like yeah like i just feel like i like no one has ever really gotten it when they're like when i tell them like why i don't like being high and like the reason is that like i don't like feeling like i couldn't do a math problem like at any moment like and that's just Mm -hmm. like the best way i've ever figured out how to articulate it and everyone's like what like what the fuck yeah i don't know chill out yeah it's just like like people don't really like no one's ever really gotten it but i'm like yeah that this is it like stella gets it like i just don't like not feeling like i couldn't She's she doesn't think the math problem, but she thinks she's like, I don't like not being able like I feel like I can't think. She's yeah. like, I always need to like think things through. I need to be thinking about things. And I don't like when like I am under the influence and like I can't. 
Stella pulls out her credit card in her bra, the classic move, and Michael's like, ooh, Stella. And I'm like, oh, shit. And she's like, I have no other options. I have nowhere else to put it. He's like, you could have given it to me. And she's like, that's she's like, that's why women have boyfriends, to hold yourself, <laughs> which is yet another motive for the pocket conspiracy. Yes. It's like, and she, what? she left her phone at home. I was like, yeah, wow. I know. You're, this is the second time ever you're meeting this man and you're leaving your phone at home. Don't you remember in Love Hypothesis? No, Love Hypothesis, I was talking about how people are inexplicably doing that in contemporaries. Like, autism or not, grad student or not like don't give me this no, shit you i get your phone with stella it's like a little bit more believable because she's like i have nowhere to put it mm. yeah and the love hypothesis is just absurd that she doesn't have her phone yeah and just in general like today's day and age so stella one thing she does is always tapping her fingers and so like she's also well, mostly we hear about it when she's trying not to tap her fingers or when michael is like you know asking her why she's doing it yeah and it's to debussy's Arabesque, I like which I used to do. I love that song. But I did used to I used to used to tap it. It would mostly be like so people would think I was like interesting and mysterious and like ask me what I was doing. <laughs> but um yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So they're at the bar. Wait. Stella is experiencing wait, what? I wanna play it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay. I feel like I vaguely know that song and I feel like but I Oh god, that annoying one. Oh, the one that you would play endlessly when I was trying to take naps. Okay, stop that. Stop. 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 I feel like I recognize that song not because of your singing, but in spite of it. Like that was just not a great rendition of that song. So Stella's in the club. They are not playing Debussy's arabesque they are playing loud techno music and there are lights and there are a lot of people it's like busier than it usually is and she's just really experienced sensory overload and then there's this woman this like 40 year old blonde woman at the bar who is like eyeing michael and like taps her seat for him to come over and like michael Mm -hmm. goes over to her and tells like what the fuck like why is he going over to her and then he she sees the woman kiss michael and she's like i'm out like i can't fucking like sensory overload like michael's just kissing another woman like i don't fucking understand it and she like runs out and kwan follows her and she's like says something she's like yeah i was overstimulated and kwan is like you know who else uses the word overstimulated frequently? My autistic brother, Kai. Are you autistic? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And she's like, but she's like, but don't tell Michael. This is an example when she's like, I don't tell him, but I, I can't lie. Yeah. She's like, I don't want Michael to know because like every time I tell people, they always start like walking on eggshells around me and they like treat me differently. And I just like don't want that to happen with Michael because I really like him. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I got to go. She's like, can you lend me $100 for a taxi? And I'm like, I mean, I listen, I don't know what the taxi rates are in San Francisco, but that seems like a lot of money for a taxi. No, well, it doesn't seem – it seems like a lot of money for Kai to – for Quan to have in cash on him right now. Like what? Yeah. I, been, I mean, I guess he's pulling a fucking – he's pulling an Alex – from uh, people being on vacation. I'm just like always using yeah. cash, I guess. But like. <laughs> no. He's a doomsday prepper. Kai yeah. and Alex are doomsday preppers. They met. They met because Poppy's mom is also a doomsday prepper. And they went to the annual conference. And that's how PJ <laughs> got access to the box of con. It's all coming together. Oh it's one cinematic universe. We're doing the San Francisco wine tour. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, she's like, I, I gotta go. And Michael comes out and like sees that she's like trying to leave. And he's like upset that she, she was, was trying to leave. leave. But he like, so he drives her home and she's tapping the arabesque because she's distressed. Mm-hmm. He explains, he was like that. So the woman in the bar was like one of my fo- former clients. And like, I didn't want her to make a scene. And like, she was the one that was like stalking me or whatever. So like, mm-hmm. she kissed me, like I pushed her away. Like, and he's yeah, like kind of upset that like she thought that like he would he's like you would have been totally justified in leaving if i did i was kissing her yeah yeah but he's like upset yeah and this is like the real start it might start a little bit earlier than this but the real start of michael being like i'm not good enough for stella like she's so smart and has so much going for her and i'm like a loser and also i'm like tainted like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree like my dad's a piece of shit therefore like 
I will be. It's kind of like yeah. a play. It's kind of like a play on the uh, Anthony Bridgerton theme of <laughs> thinking that your life is going to play out identically to your uh, dad's, except that the dad here is is bad versus me. yeah. He's constantly like, I have like an like an unending need to like scam. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, well, he's like, well, when things get too much, I like think about all the ways that I could like all the people that I could like, you know, weasel money out of and like yeah, steal from, like cut corners and all right. of that. And he's like, but he never acts on it. But he's like, I could, right. and that makes me a bad person, right? So yeah, they like you know work things out, and they get to Stella's house, and she has like a piano and a bed, and like that's it. She doesn't have like any other <laughs> stuff in yeah. her house. And I'm like, St- Stella is like a minimalist autistic, and I I am a maximalist autistic. I need to be surrounded by things. I need rooms. Open concept is hell. I don't understand how anyone with autism could possibly like open open concept things because it's so like I guess maybe if you live alone, sure, but like the moment you introduce another person to the mix. No way. Like, need need boxes, need walls, please. <laughs> need to not be able to be seen at all times. <laughs> so Michael's like, okay, so is this when Stella's like- This is when. She's like, we should end the arrangement because I don't need help with like, it's like worse than like kissing. It's, it's I need help with like dating and relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and Michael is like, over my dead body, are we ending this arrangement? <laughs> let's let me be your practice boyfriend <laughs> yeah and he's like you know what a practice girlfriend would do come meet her practice boyfriend's family and this is like i feel like you know i feel like i've been saying this more and more maybe i just like have been unfair on the fake dating trope but i feel like a lot of times or at least i remember thinking this that a lot like fake dating would seem like totally contrived especially in historicals i remember thinking like it would seem like you know there's no reason for it and it's like they just immediately like get together and the fakeness like goes away right away so what was even the point of the conceit usually but like i don't know with this it seems like i mean it's still like you know pretty out there but like it doesn't seem it seems like there's a reason for it so i like that she's also like she stella's like i don't know when i saw that client like kiss you and like be obsessed with the like the ex-client she was like i don't like like now the idea of like paying you for sex and like i and like kissing mm-hmm. like it, it, it just like makes me like feel bad um and he's like th- she's like the next time a man kisses me i want it to be because he wants to kiss me not because like he's being paid to yeah and then like immediately after she says that michael's like hey hey come here and she's like what and then he kisses her and he's like i wanted to do that <laughs> <laughs> but then she's she's like yeah i'll pay you fifty thousand dollars a month i'll pay oh you God. fifty thousand that is that, listener that's how much i make in a year oh my God. before taxes that's what i'm saying like stella's rich rich you're not gonna tell me she got that from like raises as an econometrician like no oh my god and how long this is okay maybe i'm jumping the gun on this but like how long has she even been working because she got her phd and, like, even if she's, like, the most precocious, like, let's say she graduated college. She got her PhD at 25. We we learned that. She oh, got her okay, PhD okay. At 25. So then she's been working for max five years. Yeah. But There's she no also, way. like, I bet Stella's, has like, money had family. investment accounts since she was, like, 16. No, but she also has, like, I mean? money. She also got a huge amount, a chunk of money from her family. Like, that's the real reason she's, Yeah, she like, has so a trust loaded. fund. Yeah, I don't think exactly. the book is ever trying to hide that, though. No, like, no, I no. I'm just saying. From the bat, you know Stella's know, parents are super I know. Rich. I just think it was funny that Michael was like, wow, so econometricians are, like, loaded. I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, she has don't a Don't get that impression. Fund. She has a $15 million trust fund. Don't go into economics for the money. As counterintuitive as that might sound to a lay person. Don't do it. (laughs) So, okay. Michael's like, I need to think about it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of things. Yeah. So, yeah, she doesn't meet his family yet. So, she he needs to think about it. And then Michael – there's just, like, a scene, like, before we get, like – Michael's having a bad day because he, like, first he, like, came in, found his mom, like – passed out in the bathroom and like he thought she was dead and he was like really scared and then like also because someone from the irs or like whoever came to like for his dad and like he feels selfish not wanting to listen to his mom complain about his dad and like not wanting to have to take on the burden all the time and i'm like michael you caregiver burnout is real my friend like you can ask for help like you don't you don't have to do it all alone but like that's the journey that michael's got to go on he's got to learn that he's allowed to ask for help i know is he even the oldest yes he is the oldest yes because at at one point um at one point they're talking about birth order and like i have more to say on that so i won't talk about it now but no but they didn't say who was older among michael and his other sister he's either oldest or second oldest but they were both like brother two and sister two so he 
I don't know if we're talking about uh, the oldest. Oh, you know what? Is. One of his sisters is Stella's age. Yeah. So, yeah. He's probably, he's the old, he's the right, only right. boy. So, but like, there's, right. But there's three sisters that all have jobs. The other two are in college. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but whatever. It's I guess it's masculinity. It's toxic, well, masculinity, eh. toxic masculinity, man. I guess still, it's subversion of the oldest sister having to like do all that shit <laughs> trope, I guess. Yeah. Like, second oldest brother, or second child brother. It is a really interesting duality, and I I wrote this down somewhere else. I guess it also has to, it's interesting with duality with Michael, where like a lot of his attribute, his like main sort of character descriptions are like feminine, like traditionally feminine. Like he's an s, like he's a sex worker, which is like mm, usually true. women, and like he likes to design clothes, which is like usually women, yeah, um, or that. like feminine men. But like he also has this like also the impact of like toxic masculinity of taking on the burden of his family and like feeling like he has to like be the quote unquote man of the house and like yeah so it's like this really interesting duality of like michael yeah like all the compounding (laughs) burdens like yeah the worst of all worlds i don't know Um, (laughs) no the fashion design is like oh sure sure but the yeah yeah, the being the oldest yeah being the oldest sister and the oldest brother yeah so okay yeah so we so yeah so michael so the scene you were talking about is when he talks to kwan right and Quan yeah. is like, oh, do you need sex tips? <laughs> I'm like, does Michael need sex tips? He's like, oh, you haven't seen Stella for a week. Like, I guess you've been jerking off a lot. Like, and then it, they're yeah. like sitting on the couch, and Michael's like, uh, yeah, this couch, these cushions right now. Yeah. No. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then and then Quan is like, so uh, do you think Stella is like Kai at all? And Michael's like, nah. <laughs> No, definitely not. And Quad is literally like, oh my god, this man, <laughs> this man, like it. The lights are on, but there is no nobody, work being done. There's nobody home. Yeah, yeah. like ah oh, man, God. <sighs> um, so okay, so Michael has missed the deadline for talking to, for like, not really missed the deadline, but it's the day that no, he, he was supposed it. to tell Stella, and she wakes up and she has to like take her own dry cleaning to get clean because her her housekeeper. Another thing, okay. yeah. Let's tell she, rich, yeah, rich. she has money. She has like her housekeeper. I know, I know. Yeah, she's like I. Uh, her housekeeper's daughter is sick or something, so she's yeah. like, I can't come this week. You're gonna have to take your own dry cleaning. And Stella has no idea like what dry cleaner she usually uses, so she just like Google's closest dry cleaner, and it just so happens <laughs> that that is Michael's family shop. Yep. <laughs> So she rocks up and there's this old lady like struggling to like cut like some, a plant or tree branch or something. With some, She's like, like doing some shears. landscaping yeah. in her herb garden outside the dry cleaners. And it's like I'm imagining it's like a strip mall and this like old yeah, lady has somehow commandeered yeah. like a plot of land yeah. in the middle of the sidewalk and is just growing an herb garden. <laughs> yep. And the old lady like doesn't speak English but she's like basically indicates to Stella like I need you to do this for me like cut this for me right now <laughs> so I was like uh okay and like <laughs> manages to do it and then the old lady like she's like okay thank you and like walks back in like hiding the shears like as if no one's gonna yeah. notice she has them <laughs> she never comes back it's never like oh grandma why have you have you been at the shears again like it's never like it's just like a cute moment and yeah. so Stella <laughs> so then Stella walks in and she sees Michael before he sees her and she's like oh my god this is not she's like this is not fair yeah, i wasn't stalking I, yeah she <laughs> says she the quota she's like oh, not fair she'd only just realized she was obsessed with him today she <laughs> had time to stalk him like a full-time lunatic <laughs> is this one he like comes up to her and kisses her before the mom yeah yeah so she goes up and he's like oh like you have fancy you have clothes that like don't she's like i have like very like i have special clothes taste like i don't like when there's like seams that are itchy and like all that stuff and then she's like maybe you can make me some clothes and michael is immediately like turned on by that he's like wow that would literally be my life goal like my dream come true and then he accepts her offer and yeah this is when he kisses her because he wants to and who witnesses it but his mom and she's immediately intrigued and she's like Oh, like, who is this, Michael? And she's like, oh, Stella, like, you have to come for dinner. You have to come for dinner. Meet the family. You have to do it. And Stella's like, okay. And so that night – so the, Stella spends the rest of the day, like, freaking out um, 
about like what to do. And she like, she Googles like Vietnamese social customs and like comes up with it. She's like, oh, okay. I should bring like a gift, which like, wouldn't you, isn't that just like every social custom? She like, just runs, <laughs> she runs through like social rules in general. She's like sitting in the, her car, like outside his house. And she's just like going down the list of like, okay, like make eye contact, but not for too long. And like, make sure that you mm-hmm. like smile. And she brings like flowers and wine or whatever. Um, And then she goes in and the first thing like basically the grandma's there watching tv and michael's youngest sister janie is playing piano but the piano is out of tune so she goes in and she's like peeling mangoes with um michael's mom and grandma because they're like preparing before dinner is ready because michael's a cook by the way michael can cook once again like mm-hmm. pa pa energy big pa energy bpe and they're peeling the mangoes and like i just i just like i need to know please write in did everybody but me know there was like a giant seed in the middle of mangoes that you had to cut out because the first time i ever cut a mango i mean i know this now but the first time i ever cut a mango i got it from like you know i was walking home from work and i picked it up from my local bodega i took it home and i tried to cut into it because i feel like every video i've seen of people cutting mangoes like they just like you just cut the mango in half and then like suddenly like they're the, the two mango slices and there's no visual ever of a seed. And so I like tried to chop into this mango and I was like, what the fuck? Like there's something hard in the middle. And I thought like I was like, oh, the mango is frozen in the middle because it was like cold <laughs> and my bodega kept the fruit outside. Like my bodega kept the fruit outside. So I was like, oh, it was cold outside. Like maybe the mango froze. Oh my God. And I was like, I don't understand. And I like tried to wait for it to defrost. And I was like, this mango is not defrosting. And then finally, like I looked up like how to cut a mango and it was like, oh, cut out the seed. I was like, what? Oh because the seed is not like this is not like an avocado seed or like it's any kind of other like an avocado seed. No, but I'm saying it's not like it's not like you cut into it and like you can see like it's a different yeah. color. It stands out. It like the seed off. is fucking well, hidden. Like attached, yeah. It's very annoying. Yeah, the avocado seed you can just like pop it out. Yeah. Like the mango seed is a tricky motherfucker. It's camouflaged yeah. within the mango. You can't see it. You just have to guess where to cut and like hope that you get yeah. close to the seed. Like it's so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I literally spent two hours trying to cut this fucking mango because nobody in all the mango cutting videos I'd ever seen shows the seed. That's why you should just eat it like an apple. No, but I agree. I never thought about that. But okay, so pineapples would be vastly improved by being peelable. As yes, I pitched I in my ninth grade biology group for our GMO food and they turned me down and wanted to make fast growing rice, even though chompa rice has existed since literally 600 BC. Anyway, um, <laughs> However, I now present that mango would be vastly improved by having more of a pit, like an like a nectarine or a peach, where it kind of just like comes out, you know, like once you get or just get get rid of the seeds. We did it for bananas. Why can't we do it for mangoes? Because it's well, you can make it smaller, but it needs to have a seed in order to propagate. Bananas do still have seeds; they're just very small. Yes, they're like the little exactly. things in the middle. Yeah. Yes, and I can't feel them. They don't alter the texture. The most annoying thing is that it's like the flesh is like attached to it, and you can't really get it all off. Like that's the yeah. worst. Whereas, like, with a nectarine, like, imagine, like, cutting into a ripe nectarine. Like, you would cut slices off the entire thing. They just, like, come off, you know? Wait, where's my hair tie? Oh, I meant to bring a hair tie, but it's in my hair now. Oh, speaking of which, (laughs) Stella. Okay. The fucking rubber bands in her hair. She said it the first – she snapped – she's, like, taking her hair out later on. And she, like, takes it out. And she's, like, oh, no, I snapped my rubber band. And one time I could have just, like, you know, brushed it off as just, like, calling it that. Like, you know, it's not actually a rubber band. She just means, like, a hair tie. But then, like, later on, she keeps referring to it as a rubber band. And she's like, I need a rubber band for my hair. And, like, are you ki- – like, you're going to tell me this woman with sensory issues is putting a literal rubber – an exposed rubber band in her hair? I don't think so. I think I some people just fucking call it that. Because, like, a, a normal hair tie is literally just, like, a rubber band with cloth around yeah. it. Well, yeah, but it's a hair tie. So it's it has a technically – Sure, but some people definitely call it rubber bands. Ah, uh, they're wrong. Some people also use rubber bands, but some people just call it. I remember one time, like I just had read too many scenes of like people of like people with long hair using rubber bands to put up their hair in books, and so like I finally tried it. Worst, like, horrible experience. Don't put an actual rubber band. In your no, hair. Well, it's hard. It's like it's like th- it's only for like, completely desperate times. I can't think when. I've definitely done it in like very desperate measures. Like maybe it's swim practice, yeah. and like for some reason I'm like late, so I have no choice but to like scrounge for a rubber band on the floor of the cafeteria or something. Like I don't. I can't think of any of. I have never. That's made up situation, but that's like the only situation in which I would like even consider it. 
Yeah, yeah. it's awful. Yeah. So she, Stella's hanging out with the mom and the grandma. Grandma can't really speak English very well. And Stella is like, yeah, I like hanging out with her because the language barrier <laughs> makes conversation hard. So like I don't have to talk speak. with her. I don't have to make yeah. small talk. Like It's lovely. We're just sitting next to each other peeling mangoes. Like I really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. But it's just basically just getting more and more stressful for her. Um, the TV has been up this whole time. Then Janie starts playing the piano and Stella's like, the piano's out of tune. Like, you should get it yeah. tuned. And the mom's like, oh, well, my husband used to tune it. And Stella's like, oh, where is he? Can he tune it? And yeah. she's like, she's like, she just ignores, the mom just ignores her and goes back to her work, you know, like, it's conversation closed. But Stella does not get that. Um, and then the mom offers her, like, an appetizer. It's like a, um, some kind of, like, cake that, came, that was, like, heated up in the microwave in a plastic yeah. container. And Stella's like, wait, that's plastic. It has PPA. I, I didn't – I looked this up after. Apparently, it's a thing. I don't really know. It's not going to alter my life. I don't really know what to do about it. It's like all my containers are plastic and – Yeah. But yeah, apparently, you can like poison containers. your food. And so I was like, this is poison. Like no one should eat this. And the mom's like, okay, like fine. And then and then <laughs> like Michael's sister comes in. Sisters come in and start like arguing. His twin sister. Oh, no. They're I'm not sorry. Twins. They're not twins. They're not twins. <laughs> and she's like, I want to ask if they're twins, but I learned from experience that that's rude. <laughs> Like people don't like that. Um, <laughs> but they're like arguing and then the grandma's turning up the TV yeah. and like she's stressed. She keeps trying to ask questions about Michael's dad because she just does like does not realize that it's like not a topic to ask questions about. Well, she also and, just like, really wants the piano to stop. Like, yeah, she's, like, get him in here. Yeah. So she's like, yeah, she's just freaks out. Um, And then eventually the mom like leaves in tears and Stella is like. I don't know what I did, but like I did something wrong. And so Stella's like, gotta go. Like, I'm sorry. And she's like really upset and she runs out. And Michael's like, no one makes my mom cry. Like, not even my like girlfriend or fake girlfriend or whatever. So he goes to comfort his mom. Um, and meanwhile, Stella has like booked it home. Like, and then he goes out yeah. after Stella, but she's already left. But as he's comforting his mom, he's like, he's like clearly like Stella is like very socially awkward. He doesn't yet realize <laughs> that she has autism, but he's like clear she's secretly awkward and i am just like my dad because i'm taking advantage of stella by allowing oh, yeah. her to pay me and i'm like oh, michael um his mom his mom's like are you gonna marry stella <laughs> and he's like uh no and she's like did i raise you to go kissing people's daughters like that if you're not gonna marry them yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love the mom and the grandma they're just like constantly like throwing out zingers yeah and he yeah but that's like he's like what kind of money what kind of man accepted money from a naive woman to teach her things she could learn for free and this is like i don't know i was almost losing my patience here because i was like she's literally telling you she struggles with this she can't learn it for free she's like wanting connection but struggling to get it that's what i mean her plan's a little like convoluted but it's why aren't you taking her word for it? Like, it's, it's, yeah. It's just with anything. It's like, yes, I could learn Chinese for free. Like, I could yeah. do Duolingo and, like, watch a lot of, like, you know, Chinese movies and, like, absorb the language. You know what I mean? Like, I could yeah. probably teach myself potentially passable Chinese if I really worked right. hard on it. But it would be significantly easier if I had, like, a native speaker teaching me how to do it. Like, yes, you can learn a lot of things for free. But it's easier when you have someone who's good at it, like, giving you personalized attention. Yeah. So Stella wakes up, up the next morning and she's like, all right, well, obviously this is over. I've like fucked up, but all I can do is control my future actions, not the past. And she's like, Michael said the gift was a good idea the first time. I'll get another gift and go apologize. So she gets more flowers and chocolate and goes to the dry cleaner. And the youngest daughter or second youngest daughter, Janie, is there. And she's like, Michael's not here. And Stella's like, I'm actually here to see your mom. And Janie's like, okay, like – Fine. You're, I you're making progress. You. Yeah. <laughs> so she, so, yeah, she apologizes to the mom. And the mom is like, maybe next time, like, I won't heat things up in plastic and then you will be able to eat them. Like, she, like, says something. She, like, extends, you know, goodwill. And she's like, I know, like, you weren't trying to be a bitch. Like, and she's like, we still have lots of lots more food. Like, you come eat it tonight. And Stella's like, no, no, I, I can't do that anymore. Like, I once was yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, so she goes to work. And she's like, this is again where this is where I actually wrote the note about like Stella's superpower of like living in the drudgery. She's like the empty halls and low lit cubicles usually comforted her. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, though, Michael Michael is like sparring with Kai and Quan, and then he suddenly has a brain blast. He's like thinking about Stella, and like finally his two brain cells, like the letter that the first one sent <laughs> months ago, like finally arrives. <laughs> like he 
the other brain cell picks up the phone and the <laughs> first one is like, hey, Stella really is exactly like Kai. <laughs> like she is also on the spectrum. And Michael's like, oh my God. Like, wow, this all makes sense. <laughs> and he asked Juan, he's like, when you were asking Stella, when you were asking whether Kai reminds me of Stella, like, do you know something? And Quan is like, oh my God, this man is <laughs> so stupid. He's like, yes, yes. She told me she, she's fucking autistic. You absolute dumbass. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So we're going to end this episode on that little cliffhanger. Uh, tune in next week to see whether Michael's two brain cells can continue to communicate and work together and you know, make some moves. But in the meantime, where can they find us, Rachel? Well, Allison, they can find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, Gmail, sort of, at we read it one night, the Gmail, <laughs> at another at gmail.com to the end of that, on Twitter, at we read it podcast, and now on YouTube, also at we read it one night. Check us out. I, Ooh. yeah. Right. That's mm-hmm. YouTube is Rachel's. Project. I spent a lot of time um, annoyingly clicking all the thumbnails to upload our old episodes. So go take advantage the thumbnails of that if that's I something made. you're into. Allison did make the thumbnails. Well, you – okay. Yeah. You like <laughs> – I made you a nice I little you thumbnail saying, template. Yeah. No, that was very nice. I just didn't understand the concept of that. But Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway, cat scales come in next week, mm-hmm. folks. In the meantime okay. – Hang on to your butts with your claws and get si- and get excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Godspeed, comrades. Godspeed, comrades. <laughs> <laughs>